Hey, welcome everybody to Talking Donkey International and our new television series, Country Wisdom. Let's set the tone for this new series of ours. It's found in Proverbs 4. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet and then all your ways will be sure. Join us now for Country Wisdom. Look at that view, Jim. It's beautiful, isn't it? I don't know about you, but when I come up to a place like this, out in the mountains, all these trees, rocks, that view, I can't help it, but I just feel so much closer to God. You look out at the expanse of His creation, and what's amazing to me is that there are people who don't even believe He exists. And you know, the exciting thing is, the same God of the Bible is the same God today. He's alive and well. And folks, I'd like to tell you, stay tuned because I'm going to share with you things that God is doing today. You'll discover He's alive and He's well. God truly is amazing. His creation is amazing. But there are some people who, even though they believe in God, they think that uh, maybe he created everything and then he put it on autopilot. It's just running, it's just doing its thing, and he's not involved in humanity at all. But that really isn't the case. The Bible tells us that's not the case. And a matter of fact, the Bible talks about something else. Listen to what it says in Hebrews chapter 8, or excuse me, chapter 13 and verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same God, he hasn't changed. He didn't set things on autopilot. In Malachi chapter three, verse six, I am the Lord and I do not change. So as we read things in the Bible, for instance, there's a story in Luke in chapter seven, Jesus with his disciples is walking along the street and he sees a funeral. He approaches the funeral and he sees a young boy that's dead. The mother is weeping and it says he has compassion on the mother. He goes up, he touches the boy, the touch of God. The Creator God reaches down and he lifts that boy up. See, every, every funeral that's recorded in the Bible that Jesus came across a dead person, he raised them from the dead. He broke up the funeral. And I submit to you, he's the same God today. Here's an example. We were traveling in Ethiopia and we were looking for a specific story. A fellow that I'd heard, he'd been a fortune teller for almost 40 years, but his life had changed. You see, a fortune teller, they control the village, they control the people, they control everything. And this man would tell a fortune, and you better pay attention to it, you better listen, because if you didn't, you could die. For someone who died in the village, he said, that's because they didn't listen to me. Everybody's scared of the fortune teller, and a matter of fact, every, he's rich, because he charges a lot to tell your fortune. A cow, a pig, a, a sheep, a goat, something like that. But he became a Christian. And when he became a Christian, he wanted nothing to do with that anymore. The wife, she, oh, she didn't want anything to do with Christianity. But the husband, he kept studying. And finally, several times over weeks, he discovered other people in the village had recently become Christians too. He decided he wanted to get together and study with them. Pretty soon, their little group under a tree is growing and growing and growing so large, they said, we need to find a place to rent. We'll, we'll go out and find a place that we can have as our place of worship. They begin house hunting, as it were, or church hunting. About that time, the ex-fortune teller's wife dies. That particular day, I had three cameramen. We're in the village filming. I had three cameramen. I lined up five guys. First guy. This lady was dead? Oh yes, she was dead. Second guy, you sure she was dead? Oh yes, she was absolutely dead. She was dead three days. Third guy, really, three days? <laughs> and the fourth guy, well, we prayed for her. And the fifth guy said, and God raised her from the dead. I want to submit to you, the God of the Bible, 
is the same God today. He's working in hearts and lives right now, today, in amazing ways. Amazing ways. I was in India. In India, I was holding a large series of meetings, maybe a thousand or two thousand people there. On a particular night, this lady over in the right-hand side, she begins yelling and screaming in the Telugu language, help me, help me. We stop the meetings, I call her up. She's got a child in her arms, eyes roll back in his head, child's not moving. And everybody that sees that child, as she carries him up to the stage, they begin wailing. And I think there's nothing I can do, so I send her to a friend of mine who's a medical doctor over on the side. Maybe he can look at the child. And then I think, well, what now? There's nothing else to do but pray. <laughs> and I think that is so sad for us, especially for us as Christians. We say, well, there's nothing else I can do. I guess I'll go ahead and pray. That's a last resort when prayer should be the first resort. I begin praying. My translator would pray. And as he was praying, I'd look over at the doctor, thumbs up, thumbs down. Now well, it was thumbs down. Pray again, thumbs down. This went back and forth and back and forth for several minutes. And finally, he's thumbs up. And you know, it went throughout that city, this big city that the creator God of the universe had raised that child from the dead. You see, the God of the Bible is the same God today. I'm Jim Ayer. My good friend Terry Cantrell and I have traveled the world together, filming from Egypt to Zanzibar, from Costa Rica to Brazil, India, and beyond. For years, we've captured stories that uplift the God of heaven, stories that touch and change lives. Now we're on a new adventure, and you're invited. We started Talking Donkey International. Talking Donkey is a media ministry dedicated to sharing Jesus Christ in a unique and powerful way, out of the ordinary, just like a talking donkey. Like us, I'm guessing you're tired of the same old cookie cutter programs that line the Christian airwaves. The gospel is exciting. It's time to jump out of the mold and let the donkey talk. When that happens, people will pay attention. It's way out of the ordinary, and we're inviting you to become a part of this exciting and innovative outreach to the world. People are tired of watching the same old thing. Become a financial partner with us today, and together we will change Christian TV forever. Give the donkey a voice. In chapter 8 of the book of Acts, a really interesting story. Jesus appeared to basically to Philip speaking to him. We don't know how that happened, but he spoke to him and told him, go down to the eunuch. The eunuch is riding in a chariot. He sees him. He runs down alongside the chariot. He's invited into the chariot to begin explaining some scripture. After a while, the eunuch says, well, what hinders me to be baptized? I, I know everything you've talked about. I know all the scripture, and now I understand who Jesus is as he fits in the scripture. So they go into the water, he baptizes him, and the moment he comes up out of the water, it says the Spirit takes him away and takes him to a, another whole village, another area. You say, well, that, that's in the Bible. Nothing like that happens today. <laughs> but indeed, I want to share a story with you that happened in a particular country where it's totally illegal to share the gospel message. But this young lady heard the gospel message. And she accepted Jesus with all of her heart. And she began telling everybody about Jesus. You see, that's the way it is when God has come into your life. You can't control it. You just have to share it. She was so excited about it. She's telling everyone. But pretty soon the police caught up to her. They beat her up. They tied her hands behind her back. They blindfolded her. And they hauled her out in the jungle. They dumped her in the jungle in the middle of the night and said, see if your God can protect you. She's laying there at night. She can hear the growls and the snarls and all the jungle animals. She's scared to death. She said, Lord, please, I don't want to die. Please help me, Lord. In a moment, she could 
be able to wiggle her blindfold off. And she lays there still on the ground. She looks, Lord, please help me. You know, I don't want to die, but if you want me to die, Lord, I'm willing to. But I would love to share more about you with others. She continues praying and pretty soon she can, she can feel her hands or well, she, they're loose. And she stands up and she looks all around. Lord, I have no idea where I am. It's dark, I can't see anything. Please help me to get out of this jungle. The wind begins to blow in the trees harder than it is today. It seems it was blowing harder and harder. Pretty soon her hair is blowing back and she's sick. She feels sick to her stomach. She can't figure out what it is. And the wind continues to blow harder and harder. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, she is set down in her own village completely free. <laughs> the God of the Bible, he is definitely the same God today. He's an amazing God. Well, that's not all. Scripture continues. We find in Matthew chapter 8, Jesus is confronted with demon possession. I didn't... At one time I thought, well, oh, demon possession, I don't know. Yeah, it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Well, matter of fact, it's all over, especially the New Testament. Jesus contacts Satan in so many ways. I want under, you to understand this. He defeats him every time in every way he comes in contact with him. Never misses a step. He defeats him every time. Jesus is a winner. Jesus is a winner. I was, I was in India. I had a an amazing situation where a friend of mine who's a pastor is out baptizing people in the river. We'd been holding large meetings. He's baptizing this little tiny lady, maybe 95 pounds dripping wet. And I see him struggling. I can't figure out what it is. He's pulling and pulling and tugging and this lady's still under the water. And all of a sudden she comes up out of the water and she's all contorted. Her body is totally disfigured. But God laid on my heart demon possession. I'd never seen it. I'd never really heard about it other than from the Bible. I walked down to the edge of the water where the deacons brought her to the edge of the water. I grabbed a hold of her and said, in the name of Jesus Christ, be gone. I command you to be gone, just as the Bible says. And immediately the woman, she takes a breath, she straightens her hair, and she looks around and she walks on up the bank with the other lady. God deliver this lady. You see, the same God of the Bible is the same God today. The same things happening in the Bible are happening today in amazing ways. We read in Ephesians, I want to read this for you, in chapter 6, beginning at verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. Now listen to this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The Bible talks about the powers of the devil. It speaks also of the power of God, and God never loses. <laughs> I just need to share this other story with you. I was working in Cameroon. We had an evangelistic series going in a huge uh, soccer stadium. During the meetings at one point, the audience was invited down to pray for this vast audience of their particular needs. Our speaker that particular night began to pray. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, there was this huge commotion in the stadium. We all knew, we'd been around, we'd worked enough in many countries of the world, we knew it was demon possession. A big entourage of big guys went out and they grabbed this lady who was just flailing all over. They held her up, each one guy with an arm or leg. I held her hair so she wouldn't bite the guys. We carried her out behind the screen because we'd had big, big screens filming and showing the production. And behind that screen, it began demanding in the name of Jesus Christ that the demons come out. When you demand what the Bible says, when your heart is right with God, God will answer that kind of prayer and chase the devil away. That's exactly what happened. This woman sat up, she wiped her eyes, looked around, the demon had left her. At that moment, there's somebody else in the audience that screamed again. Somebody else came around the corner and said, Jim, you have another one. The demons had jumped to another woman in the audience. Simply because you say that you're a Christian, 
Simply because you, you call and say, I'm a Christian and I go to meetings, doesn't mean that you really are. You need to invite God into your life. And God then will protect you. God will change your life because He is a God of power and a God of strength. Now, I wanted to share with you another particular quote in Psalm chapter 66, verse 5 says, Come and see, come and see what God has done, His wonderful work among His people. I think of a time when I was in the Philippines and I was talking with this pastor who his aunt, clear down in the southern part of the country, huge earthquake, he calls her up from the north. Wrong phone number. Thinks, well, because of the earthquake, the lines must be messed up. He calls the next day, same problem. Third day, he calls again. Same wrong number the third day in a row. And the woman on the other end of the line says, what are you doing? Why are you calling me? Why do you keep bugging me? He said, ma'am, I'm sorry. I wasn't, honestly. I, please, I apologize. Oh, and she begins using four-letter word cuss words. He hangs up the phone. He said, I'm a pastor. I don't need to listen to this. <laughs> well, the woman calls back. He continues to apologize and ma'am, I'm telling you the truth. I didn't try and call you. I was trying to call my aunt. Please, I even have a radio program, a Christian radio program. I, I'm honest, I'm a pastor. She stops, she says, what program do you have? He tells the name of the program and there's silence on the other end of the line. Then he hears crying. Ma'am, are, are you all right? And she tells him then, she says, I listened to your program. My husband and I have been listening to it recently all the time. Would you please come visit us? <laughs> well, in this particular area, these people not too many years before that had been headhunters. He was a little nervous to go, but he decided to go because he's a pastor. He takes a friend with him, though, at least. They go to this village, meets with this lady and her husband. In a short time, this lady, her husband, and 16 other people in this village are baptized because of a, quote, wrong phone number. I want to tell you, God knows you. God knows your heart. God knows your life. He knows your address. He knows everything about you, and He wants to connect with you. This God of the Bible is alive today. He's well, and He's ready to touch bases with you, get to know you on a very intimate and a very personal basis. This God watches out over us in such amazing ways. We were actually broadcasting into a particular area some programs, and these people were finding out about Jesus. They began meeting, but they didn't know how to conduct church. They didn't know how to form church groups or anything. So we were taking them out of the country into another country to train them on how to raise up churches because, you see, it was illegal in that country to have church. Any kind, any Christian church, it was illegal. They're sneaking out of the jungle one day, coming across the jungle, when all of a sudden over here comes the police. They come up over a rise, and the police yell, there they are, get them. Our guys are in a wide open area. There's nothing they can do. They freeze. They're just like deer in the headlights. As the police with guns ready come running up to them, they look and they look and say, where did they go? Where did they go? One of the police said, there they go that way. And they took off running across that path that they'd just been on out in the jungle to leave our guys to go on their way. They were never seen. God put up a veil in the eyes of these police and protected them. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the God who's alive and well today, the God of the Bible. The things God does in the Bible, same God today, an amazing God. There's another story down in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Sao Paulo can be a pretty rough location, pretty tough place. This one day though, this young man and his wife, they're driving down the roadway. The wife says, stop, stop. He slams on the brake, scares him half to death. <laughs> My wife does that to me once in a while. I say, what's happened? You just slam on the brakes and she jumps out of the car. She doesn't say a word. She comes back and she's got a little book. Says, honey, do you see any wind? No, no wind. This book was laying out in the field and the pages were blowing back and forth, first one way, and then another way, blowing back and forth. I just had to see what this book was because there is no wind. Well, they read this book. It was an amazing book. They were so excited. <laughs> they were thrilled to death. But there was no advertising in the book. No place to call, no place to find out who printed this book. One day, the fellow in downtown Sao Paulo was riding his motorcycle. 
He comes up behind this vehicle, and on the bumper of the vehicle, there's a little sticker, the same sticker that was on that book. He pulls up alongside the car. He begins talking to the fellow. In downtown Sao Paulo, when a motorcycle pulls up alongside you, that's not necessarily good. The guy in the vehicle rolls up the window, and as soon as the stoplight changes to green, he takes off. Motorcycle follows right in behind him. He's following him down the street. Now the guy speeds up a little bit, but all of a sudden he's caught at another traffic light. The motorcycle pulls up alongside him again, scares the guy so bad the guy goes through the red light now. Motorcycle follows him along, continuing down the streets. Finally, he's blocked with traffic. He can't move. Fellow pulls up alongside him and he yells the name of the book. Great controversy, great controversy. The guy in the car stops. He, he cracks his window a little bit. He says, what did you say? Great controversy. And this fellow worked in the church who had handed out this particular book. He knew this book. And he began studying with the fellow and his wife. They were baptized. They were baptized in that encounter of a book laying out in the field with no wind, whose pages were blowing back and forth. Oh, God loves you, friend, and God is seeking to have that relationship with you. You need to pay attention and listen and watch for God is at work around you and join God. And I could probably share stories for hours with you, things that are happening right now. I, I do want to share at least one more story with you, though, and that's in uh, Nepal. This fellow was a Maoist terrorist. It's kind of a mouthful to say Maoist terrorist, but he was. People were scared of him everywhere. He'd go to a village, everybody would give everything he asked for because he'd kill them otherwise. Very simple. He'd shoot them dead. One particular day, he walked into a church. He walked into this church. He was going to kill the pastor and take the money, take the offering. They'd just recently taken up the offering. Well. He got into that church, he sticks the gun in the pastor's face, and the pastor says, you're going to change. When God comes into your life, you're going to change. <laughs> it shocked him so much. He, he couldn't believe it. He didn't know what to do. He turned and he left. He didn't even take the money. Time went by. He's continually thinking of this. Who is this Jesus fellow? Who, who is this Jesus? It, it bothered him so, day after day. And one day, as he's tuning the radio, he comes across the program that's talking about this Jesus. He stops, he listens and thinking, what is this? But after a while of listening to the same program every day, he fell in love with Jesus Christ. You see, that's what happens. You begin listening to who Jesus is, the God of the Bible, who's the same God today, and you begin falling in love with him. And this young man did. He changed his whole life. He quit being a terrorist. Normally they would kill him but he helped convert many of the other terrorists as well. You know, it's amazing the things God does. In Romans chapter 8, verse 31, the Bible says, in view of all this, what can we say? What can we say? I think about a young man that I was doing meetings in, in one of the particular states here in the US. The young man was a pretty big boy, about 600 pounds. Turned out he'd been an Aryan Brotherhood enforcer. He'd been a murderer. He gave his heart to God. And we had a big tank that day, kind of a stock tank is the only thing we had. We were in a kind of a country setting and we baptized that young man in that tank. Wash his sins away. God wants to change each one of us. Maybe things you've done. You, you know, you might be a drug dealer, an alcoholic and a thief. I was all those things at one time. You may be a cocaine addict. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. God doesn't care. He says, come to me. I will change you. I will give you rest. I think of a young lady and, and her mother, Christina and Maria. They were down in Brazil. Christina, well, she was a, a beautiful young woman. And her mother could tell that one day she was going to be problems to, you know, with the young men. Every young man looked at her with eyes, well, just wide open. She kept saying, you do not go to the city. Do not go to the city, honey. You will have troubles if you go to the city. Mom gets up one morning, she goes to her bedroom, and there Christina's bed is totally empty with a note on the bed. Mama, I love you, I've gone to the city. Oh, just, just about broke the mother's heart. Mother gathers up every, every bit of coin, every bit of change, every bit of money she could find, and she put it all in a little purse and she headed toward the bus station. Before she got to the bus station, she stopped at a little place that took photos. You know, she got in this little booth and she took photos 
every dollar, every penny, every dime she spent on photos. She got on the bus and she headed to the city and she began writing on the back of each one of these. Every single one she wrote something. She got to the city and she began going to every sleazy hotel, every dive, every restroom she could find and she posted one of those photos. This went on for days and days and days until she'd finally spent all the rest of her money. She spent everything and she had no more photos and she went home. And she continued to pray, continued to pray for her young sweet daughter. And one day that young sweet daughter who looks a little harder now, a little rougher, comes down one of those back dark stairwells with a guy hanging on to her. She comes to the bottom of the stairs and there on a little bulletin board is a picture of her mama. She turns the photo over and she reads what mama had written on the back of it. It says, honey, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've become, I still love you. Come home. My friends, God feels the same way. No matter what you've done, no matter what you've become in life, God loves you. He cares for you. He wants you to come to Him. Seriously, it doesn't matter how bad you are. The devil will try and tell you, you're too bad. You can't come to God with all the things you've done. Don't believe him. The Bible says he's a liar from the beginning of time. He's a liar. But you can trust God. You can believe God. Same God of the Bible. Same God today. He loves you. Respond to him right now. Say, Jesus, please come into my life. And God will do that. And he will change your life. Please respond to God right now, just as you are. Introducing Talking Donkey International. God once used a donkey to spread his word, but he'd rather use all of us. Our experienced team has preached, taught, and filmed in countries around the globe. In partnership with you, our mission is to share the life-saving love and hope found only in Jesus Christ with everyone in this lost and dying world. Your financial partnership with Talking Donkey will enable this exciting ministry to proclaim that Jesus is coming soon. It's time to prepare quality programming created to attract and reach viewers of the world. Together, we can carry the final Advent message to the individuals of planet Earth and hasten the return of our Lord. Please pray for and support the successful mission of Talking Donkey International. Hey, thanks for joining us for Country Wisdom. See you next time.